Hello, hello. In this video, I'm going to finally be doing the review of this here Anycubic Mega Pro 2-in-1 3D printer. Uh, it's taken a little while because this printer actually stopped working after about 30 hours of printing, but it's been a good excuse to test out the Anycubic support and see if it's any good or not. Okay, so as mentioned, this printer did stop working. What's happened is that the Y-axis no longer moves. Uh, it's pretty unresponsive. You can hear a little uh, chime of the stepper, but nothing is actually happening. Uh, I've reached out to Anycubic to test their support and see, uh, see what they would suggest. And um, they were, were okay, actually. They responded within the 24 hours that they, they promised. And first of all, they asked a few questions like, um, can you check that the grub screws tightened on the y-axis? Can you uh, check the firmware's okay? Um, and can you do a test of the stepper motor? So that's what I'm gonna do here because it was previously working on this existing firmware and I have indeed checked that the grub screw is tight. Funnily enough, it does lead me to one of the negatives of this printer uh, in the fact that it is very boxed in and hard to fix anything if it goes wrong. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speed through this and uh, you'll see what I mean there. But I will finish up this video with all the pros and cons of this printer and then you can make up your mind whether this is something that would work for you. As you can see, to get into this printer, I've got a lot of screws to undo. Uh, and even things like this, the cable management at the bottom, it's all tied in, which, all right, is great when it's working, but anyone that's done a lot of printing knows that they do go wrong from time to time. And this is just a faff that you really don't want to have to be doing. Okay, so once you've taken the eight screws off of the bed, you can then remove the base plate and have a look at what's going on inside. It's interesting actually that the stepper motor down here has got some sort of sealant on it, sealing in the, uh, the cable. Weird uh, gel wax stuff holding it all together. You can then take the stepper out. And they did send a good video of how to identify whether the stepper is working or not, but obviously it only works if you've actually got a multimeter. If you haven't got a multimeter, you could take a connector out, put it into this one, try to turn that axis and just see if it works and moves this. Then that will tell you it's either the board or the cable. Um, but since I do have a multimeter, I will test it the way they suggested. Right, so I've got to test pins one and three and see if it beeps. It beeps, and then four and six. It beeps. Okay. So there's no problem with the stepper motor, which means it's something else. Okay, so after a little bit of detective work, I discovered that the problem with the printer is the controller board. Something on that has gone amiss and so the y-axis is no longer working. To determine that, I did do all the necessary checks uh, to eliminate each part of the construction. So, for example, swapped the stepper motor drivers over to check that that wasn't the cause and then also tried to drive the stepper motor from the y-axis port, which did indeed work. So I'm fairly confident it is the board that indeed went wrong, which considering it's only done about 50 hours of printing is pretty disappointing. Um, yeah, they should be a little, little bit more reliable than that. I am someone, if you know about the filament that I work on, absolutely hate waste. So even even just to have to throw a controller board out after that sort of amount of usage really really annoys me so um yeah not not great there 
Anyway, ignoring that fact, I did still get a good chance to uh, try a few different prints out on this machine and see what I think of it. And I have come up with this little pros and cons list, which might help you decide what you think when buying or considering whether to buy this printer. Firstly, let's start and be positive. It has a really sturdy construction. It is like a, a rock um, and for a printer so small, you don't have to worry too much about it falling apart. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's very solid and uh, for the price point, um, particularly for when you're not paying for the laser as well, the Mega Pro is, is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all. So that's, a, that's the first positive. Secondly, we have the drive gear here, which I'd initially put down is, is very good, and then I'm adjusting to good-ish. It's, it's a, a clone of a, one of the Bontech dual drive gear extruders. Um, clones can be brilliant, clones can be average. This one's average. It provides a good force um, and good extrusion, but the, the opening at the start has a has a long canal, um, canal, channel, canal, a long space for the filament to go through, and it's just not needed. And it means that if you're trying to pull filament back through the tube and it swells at all, um, then it makes it difficult to get out. And so I actually drilled that myself to make it a bit bigger. It's just not necessary. It doesn't need to be there. I decided to drill out the canal and record in case you want to repeat it. You'll see that section there is where they've only allowed a very small tolerance around the filament so if it swells at all it makes it difficult to remove as you can see in this section here filament has got stuck in the canal and it's a nightmare so i took a two millimeter drill bit and drilled through that section to enlarge it and ensure that if filament does swell in the hot end it's still easy to remove from the extruder much better so it's okay, the, the extruder. It's a good starting block anyway. The Z-axis on this printer is good. It's got two lead screws here and here, um, and they are both driven from separate stepper, stepper motors, which is good. It's, uh, you wouldn't always expect that on a printer so small, but it's always good to have. Um, and following on from that point, they both have their own end stop which again is really good because it can be possible for uh, the, the z-axis on either side to get slightly out of line not by much but enough to take your bed leveling out if you've only got an end stop on one side so that's a positive um, i also really like the little end stop adjustment screws you've got which really give you an extra bit of fine control in your bed leveling and it's also got some really nice big bed leveling screws on the bottom of the build plate so all in all if you're a first time printer trying to get your bed level will be pretty easy on this machine which is great um, i also think generally speaking they've done a, a a fairly good job of constraining the cables they have used cable ties though rather than coming up with some alternative uh, constraint method which is a bit annoying because it means that if you have to get at your cables for some reason you're going to have to cut those clips and reuse new clips every time which again is a bit wasteful but on the whole it's it's a pretty good implementation right so that's the the positives um now on to the negatives firstly noise this printer is advertised as having the trinamic stepper motor drivers and so you generally when you read that expect it to be pretty quiet as a machine goes as well as obviously having the benefits that they provide in terms of uh, control however this printer is really really loud <laughs> Whatever fan they're using in the power units or in the body of the um, printer itself is really, really loud and it sort of completely undoes any benefit of the quiet stepper motor drivers. Um, it's a bit like making a vegan cake and then covering it all in bacon frosting. Not only does it make the whole thing a bit pointless and undo all the work, that you did in the start it yeah 
just leaves a bit of an unpalatable taste, but there we go, such is, such is that. Second thing, um, the spool holder, the stock spool holder that comes with it is a bit rubbish. Uh, however, you might know that from my initial unboxing video, I designed my own, um, which works a lot better. It's round and it, of course, fits 3D tomorrow filament, so that makes it better. So we've turned that negative into a plus with a simple uh, two-hour print. The sturdy construction also has a bit of a downside because they've gone a bit OTT on the weight when it comes to this extruder head. If you look at the size of it, it is absolutely bloody massive and it just doesn't need to be. Not only does it make it hard for you to get into because they've boxed it off with so much steel, it makes it really heavy, which then in turn makes the prints that you get from this machine not quite so good. You can really see the layer lines on this printer because the movement uh, shows, up, shows up in those prints because of the weight. So that's a bit of a downside, unfortunately. It also means that if you're trying to do sequential mode, which is where you sort of print one piece fully, then the next, then the next, you're getting a massively reduced area of print, basically, because you can probably only fit maybe four small prints onto this build platform in sequential mode, which is a bit of a pain. Another negative is the runout implementation. So some printers have filament sensor runout, little detector that the filament runs through so that the printer knows when it's got no filament left and doesn't bother continuously printing. The idea is that you can then resume a print and come back to it later when you put some more filament in. The only issue is on this printer, when you run out, it turns off the temperature of the hot end. That's fine, no problem there. But it also turns the temperature of the bed off. So if you're printing anything that needs heat for bed adhesion, which pretty much everything does if you're printing something big anyway, then it's gonna pop off the bed and that's just, well, what's the point? Uh, so yeah, so a sort of pointless filament runout implementation. The UI isn't great. It's a bit unresponsive, it's a bit buggy, obviously it's Anycubic's own design, so um, props to them to, for creating their own, but equally, why bother if you're not going to do a proper job? Uh, because, yeah, it's very buggy. I mean, when you try and print something on this machine and then you come back to it to print something again, it just doesn't work. You have to turn it off, turn it back on again, and then start a new print. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a bit annoying. Uh, I sort of touched on this when I was talking about the cables, but it has quite a closed off design, uh, meaning that if anything goes wrong, it's a nightmare to try and fix. And it's certainly very time consuming, a lot more so than it would need to be. Uh, so that always annoys me uh, because I don't like wasting time. And yeah, sometimes it's a bit unresponsive. I touched on that with the UI. Other than that, it's, it, it is a pretty good machine. And with a few tweaks, it would be a lot better machine. Personally, I think there are better machines for the price point, but obviously you do have this little laser functionality, which might really attract some people if you're short of space. Um, but personally, I think if you're interested in printing, you could get a better printer. And if you're interested in the laser side of things, you could get a, you know, a dedicated laser, even, even desktop uh, lasers which would be a lot more powerful than this thing and safer because they'd come in a protected box. Um, yeah, I think if you bought one of those individually, you, you wouldn't come out too much more expensive than this printer and you'd have two better pieces of kit. So that's what I'd recommend. But um, if you love the idea of being able to do both on one unit, then by all means, this printer could be okay for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, I try to be somewhat brutally honest because uh, a lot of people aren't um, so yeah hopefully hopefully you like that critique and way of reviewing um, I will always give credit where credit's due and I do think this printer has a lot of good points too and uh, it wouldn't take much to make it an absolutely fantastic machine if you did enjoy this video do give it a like and subscribe for more printer reviews tutorials and stuff about 3D Tomorrow filaments, which, you know, I've got a lot more about that coming up soon. Anyway, for now, I'll say goodbye and I will see you next week. Cheers.